This field that I'm standing in used to be covered in rapeseed. They've since harvested it all, processed the oils, and now it's something else. But just a few months ago, Jonas and I were flying the drone in Czechia in these huge fields of blooming yellow rapeseed. Now, at that time, I thought they were being used for canola oil, that common cooking oil you get in stores. Instead, the farmers told me they're being used as a fuel. It's a countrywide initiative to move towards biofuel. In fact, this is happening all over Europe and much of the US and Canada. In fact, farmers are given an incentive to grow it, and it now covers 16% of the countryside in Czechia. And this, well, on the surface at least, seems very, very good. I will say, once you start diving in though, there are a few issues. The basic idea is that it's carbon neutral. So instead of pulling carbon from the earth and releasing it, then these plants sequester it, and then it's released again. The only carbon cost is the carbon needed to harvest, process, and transport it which in some ways also means it's not totally carbon neutral. Now this is fascinating in itself, but first let's step back and look at what this plant actually is. Jonas found some alongside the road to show you how big they are. Hey guys, Jonas here. I'm on the side of the road here in Sweden. I just want to show you a really cool plant that we have growing here. This is Brassica napus, or napus, depending on how you pronounce it. We call it raps here in Sweden, commonly called rapeseed plant in uh, English. Now this is in the mustard family and it's actually really easy to tell the members of this family if you look at the flowers. The flowers have four petals that are shaped in a cross. And if you're not used to looking for these, I'm sure you can just go out in your backyard and you will most likely find some plants that are in this family. Just to give you a few examples, turnips, cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. They're actually all in this mustard family as well. But the real service that we will get from these particular flowers here are from the seeds that will form now when the flowers are done blooming, which will happen very soon. And this is what makes rapeseed the second largest source of protein meal in the world and the third largest source of vegetable oil. And if you're wondering why you don't see bottles that say rapeseed on the shelf, it's basically a branding thing. It's worth noting the name rape seed comes from the Latin rapa, which means turnip. The problem was that rapeseed always had high uricic acid in it. It wasn't until selective cultivars were bred specifically to have low uricic acid in it that it finally became safe for cooking in high amounts. They rebranded canola oil. Canola oil is an acronym of sorts, CAN for Canada, and OLA for oil low acid. That means you can cook with it and it's safe. So just to clarify, you can make canola oil out of rapeseed plants. That's what they do, but it's a very particular cultivar. But let's stop and talk about this as a biofuel. Biofuel can be ethanol, and that's produced usually from corn or sugarcane, or it can be biodiesel, like soy, palm oil, or rapeseed. Now the biodiesel from rapeseed looks like this. You squeeze the oil from the seeds, then you transform it through transesterification. You're left with glycerol and biodiesel, which you can actually put into your diesel engines and you can create hydro-treated, renewable jet fuel. If you care at all about the environment, you're probably thinking this is a fantastic thing. You have a renewable resource and you're doing something that is in theory carbon neutral or you have less greenhouse emissions. And that is kind of how it's being pitched all over. But if you're someone like me whose primary goal is protecting biodiversity and making sure there are good wild areas, it does feel like a fairy tale out here then you see a real problem. And I'm not gonna dive into this topic too much further, but I just want you to realize, if you're growing a valuable resource like fuel on the surface, then you're creating a little bit of a land grab. You know, you're not just putting the, the biodiesel in an abandoned field. You're replacing a field that could be growing food. Uh, you're actually then now having to grow food in other places. For instance, in the tropics, people use palm oil for biodiesel. And if you know a little bit about palm oil, you know that that's not great for the rainforest. Plus, there is a ton of herbicide and pesticide put on these fields, which means if you're an animal and you go into a field like this, you're probably not coming out. Plus, it increases the price of food because of market demand. It's just how it works. Before I leave this biofuel issue, I should point out that my goal in filming these fills was originally just to talk about the fascinating biology of this showy rapeseed plant. It really is an interesting botanical specimen that could power the jets that I'd ride in the next time to get to Czechia. And while as an ecologist, I see that selling this as a way to help us all feel morally justified in our fuel consumption is very appealing. 
Well, I can't help but think that this isn't the solution we're all looking for. And maybe it's even distracting us. You see, these fields are dead zones in many ways. And if you're anyone from a scientist to a birder to a wildlife advocate or even a proud hunter, it doesn't take long to think through the consequences of this sort of growing fuel. So, unlike almost every other rapeseed video here on YouTube that seems to overlook this obvious point, I'm here to throw just a bit of warning about taking this amazingly cool plant and other biofuels and covering large amounts of our earth in it in the name of climate stewardship. So let's move forward in our green futures. I'm all for that. Let's use this amazing plant for what it gives us. But I hope that everyone can see that we should also prioritize the most primal thing we still hold on to, and that is the wild places. And if we can find that balance, then there will always be room for these spectacularly cool golden fields of rapeseed. By the way, welcome to the Swedish countryside here. I'm visiting Jonas, who many of you follow along our adventures on Instagram or whatnot. We've done so many videos in the past. I'm really excited to be here. I got a video coming out every week until Christmas time. If you want to see rough cuts before they come out, uh, I'm sending them over on Patreon. That's also how a lot of people are supporting this work and trying to encourage this educational outreach, make it better and better. So I really appreciate all of you who are supporting that. Uh, oh, and you can get a copy of the book Haley and I wrote cheaper there than you can on Amazon, which is kind of cool. Okay, we'll see you in the next one.